Model steam engines for beginners. This one's part 18. Beam engines. What the component parts are called and what they do. To start this episode I'm showing a Stuart major beam engine running on the bench in slow motion. And it may come as no surprise to most viewers that the bit going up and down is actually called the beam. The evolution of beam engines was a very complicated process. The first beam engines were not really steam engines at all I suppose, they were atmospheric engines and they used the vacuum of the atmosphere to push the piston down in a cylinder and lift a beam at the other end. To create this vacuum that's where the steam came in, but it was at very low pressure, not much more than the pressure from a kettle. The function of the steam in a Newcomen type atmospheric engine was just to provide the steam that could be condensed by spraying some water into the cylinder which created a vacuum and pulled the piston down the cylinder. Atmospheric pressure is only 14 pounds per square inch, but it's the square inch part that's important, because the cylinders on these early Newcomen type engines were quite large. The only thing they had to do was lift the water from a well, and once the piston had lifted the end of the beam doing the work, the beam descended under its own weight. Then the cycle started again. Newcomen atmospheric engines are not to be confused with beam engines of this type. These were known as high pressure steam engines. This one is a Stuart Models major beam engine, it's quite large for a model. But it uses the normal steam principles of having a cylinder with a piston in the middle of the cylinder and high pressure steam is admitted to each end of the cylinder, pushing the piston down and then up the cylinder. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, it's the momentum of the flywheel storing the kinetic energy that allows the piston to go over top dead center or bottom dead center, whichever way you look at it. The valve arrangement on this engine is a bit confusing. On the full size, they had lots of handles to move the valve gear manually. And once the engine was rotating successfully, the handles could be locked in a fixed position to operate the valve gear. The handle at the junction of the eccentric rod and the rocker arm is just a dummy. Similarly, the governor on this engine isn't actually connected to anything, but it's great to see it spinning round. This engine is running quite slowly. If it was running faster, centrifugal force would cause the balls to move outwards, and normally this would move a lever to move a rod to close a valve, which means that the further the balls are out, less steam pressure is allowed into the engine. This beam engine with a Stuart 504 boiler is the smaller type of beam engine. It's a lot smaller than a major beam engine and it doesn't have a governor at all. Here are the names of some of the parts. This part's fairly obvious, it's the steam cylinder. And the cylinder is fitted with a couple of cylinder drain taps. They're really called cylinder drain cocks, but that causes problems with YouTube, so I will call them cylinder drain taps. You open these when you first run the engine before the cylinder's warm to release the water so you do not get a hydraulic lock. At the top of the cylinder is the piston rod stuffing gland, which when adjusted correctly stops the steam from leaking where the piston rod goes in and out of the cylinder. At the right hand side of this image is the valve chest and steam inlet, and the gunmetal part that's fastened to the steam chest cover is actually the governor valve. As this engine doesn't have a governor, then this part is just for decoration purposes. The long rod at the bottom of the video is the eccentric rod, which is connected to the eccentric and it's moving the rocker arm back and forth, which in turn operates the valve. Here's a close-up of this rocker arm. Really, it's called a bell crank. It converts left to right movement into up and down movement, and it's set at 90 degrees in this installation. Connected to the shaft of this rocker arm are two levers, which in turn push two links and as you can clearly see, move the slide valve up and down. The peculiar twisting motion of the operating mechanism is because the two arms, which are connected to the shaft that's been moved by the rocker arm, are not perfectly aligned with each other. It's not an issue, but I will correct it when I get round to it. This is a really clever bit of a beam engine. It's called Watts Parallel Motion. The purpose of these links can be quite confusing until you fully understand how they work. The piston rod just goes up and down, but the beam is describing an arc. 
and if this parallel motion wasn't fitted, then as the beam went up and down, it would actually bend the piston rod. You will notice at either side, two of the links are anchored to the entablature. And on this engine, it's not as complicated as on a major beam engine, it's just a couple of metal bars that are fastened to the column. The linkage does the movement, the piston rod stays in a straight line. Here's a different type of beam engine. This is up at Beamish and it's called a grasshopper beam engine and it's entirely different to the one you've just been watching. The beam is only anchored at one end and the other end connects to the piston rod. The end that the beam's connected to actually moves back and forth and you can see that there are two solid bars that hold the centre part of the beam in the correct position so once again the piston rod doesn't get bent. No prizes for guessing who made this engine. Another pioneer of the steam age. In some ways, the development of the steam engine was hindered by the patents of Bolton and Watt, especially in the early days because they were very strict as to who could use their ideas. And in the early days of steam, I think that that really explains why there were so many different variations that were very weird and very wonderful. This steam locomotive is called Puffing Billy. It's a replica, and if you look at it closely, it uses the same principle as the grasshopper beam in the previous image. If you look at steam engines from the 1960s and compare them with this, you can see very many differences. A lot of things needed to change before steam engines that I will call modern steam engines could happen. Even though at the time this was classed as a high pressure steam engine, the boiler's working pressure is relatively low. If you're resident in the UK or even visiting, I really recommend taking a trip to Beamish. This is also a grasshopper beam engine. It's a model that I rebuilt many years ago. A company called Brunel Models supply the castings for it. And it works in exactly the same way as the full-size beam engine at Beamish and also Puffing Billy. I'm going to conclude this video by showing a beautifully built Stuart Major beam engine. And this is an excerpt from a video I made when he brought it up to show me. This is a short video about a beam engine. To be exact, it's a Stuart Models Major beam engine and it was built by Mr Derek Fitzgibbon of Runcorn in Cheshire, England. This engine is absolutely beautiful in every way I can think of. The engine is not even run in, but still runs quite slowly. As you can see by the black oil residue, the bearings are wearing in quite well. The flywheel was machined by someone else with a larger lathe, but everything else was done by Derek. Just look at the quality of this Watts parallel motion. Making Watts parallel motion to this quality really takes some doing. There are lots of parts to make. There is more to engineering than just machining parts of course, and the fitting of this engine is also exemplary. If you have a look closely at the parts, play the video a few times, you'll see the lock nuts all over the place to stop the fixings working loose. Once this engine is fully running, I would expect it to run down to about 10 revs per minute. At the moment it's still going quite fast, but each time we run it, it seems to get better. And once the oil runs clear from the bearings, we'll be getting somewhere. There really is not much more I can say about this engine that is not obvious. Engines like this do not come along very often. It is exceptional. And that is it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.